Okay, so in this problem, we have three blocks that explode apart from one another. The first separation or explosion separates the left from the center block and this center and the right blocks remain together. Then later, another explosion separates the right block from the center block. At time t equals zero, that's when block L is shot to the left with a speed of three meters per second relative to the velocity of the rest of the rocket. So as C moves to the right, L moves to the left with a speed of three meters per second relative to block C. In other words, it's moving away from block C three meters per second. Next at time 0 0.8, another explosion separates R and C so that R moves to the right of C at three meters per second. So R is moving with respect to C three meters per second to the right. At time T equals 2.8 seconds, what are the velocity of block C and the position of block C? All right, so we're gonna use conservation of momentum to solve this problem. So the momentum at the beginning is zero, right? Nothing is moving. I, I label it momentum of L, C, and R all together. Then after it separates, because the separation occurs due to an internal force, I know the total momentum is still zero. But each piece will have momentum. One will have negative momentum to the left, and the other piece will have positive momentum to the right, but they will add to zero. In other words, their magnitudes are the same, but their directions are opposite. Okay, so the piece on the left has momentum mass times velocity with subscripts L to represent the left piece. And then the momentum of the piece to the right is the center piece and the right block, the center block and the right block. So I label that C plus R. So the mass of that, of course, is the mass of C plus the mass of R and the velocity of that piece C plus R. Now I know the masses, they're given to me. Uh, two for the left and right blocks and six kilograms for the center block. But I won't be able to solve this equation because I have two unknowns in it. So can I get the velocity of the left block as a function of the velocity of the center and right block? And the relationship is the velocity of the left block is the velocity of the center and right block minus three. Now here's where I was talking about sometimes this relative motion stuff can get confusing. So if, if this does not seem obvious to you, let's use our little formula that I showed you, right? It's kind of allows you to think of, allows you to figure it out without thinking too hard. So what do they tell us? They tell us that the velocity of the left block with respect to the center block is three meters per second. And I'm choosing my uh, positive direction to be to the right, which is the direction the center block is moving. So the left block is moving to the left. So my velocity of the left block with respect to the center block is minus three meters per second. Now, in order to solve this equation here, or to make a substitution, I need to have the velocity of the center block with respect to the ground and the velocity of the left block with respect to the ground. In order to make a substitution, I have to have them both with respect to the same thing, both being in the same frame of reference. So I'm gonna convert my velocity of the left with respect to the center. Using our little method, I know that this is equal to the velocity of the left block with respect to the track. That's the tabletop or whatever it's sliding upon, okay? plus the velocity of the track with respect to the center block. So you see L and C are my outside variables and T is my inside variable and it's the same. Velocity of the left block with respect to the track, yes, that's what I want. But here I don't want the velocity of the track with respect to the center. I want the velocity of the center with respect to the track. So I can switch the subscripts and change the sign. So that's what I've done right here. I switched the subscripts and changed the sign. Now I can substitute in 
VLC equals minus three. That's what I had up here to get this equation. And now I can move the uh, VCT to the other side. And now I come up with my equation, the velocity of the center block with respect to the track minus three equals the velocity of the left block with respect to the track. Now, it's very common that when you have the frame of reference as the ground or the track, it's, it's common to not even show that subscript. So VC, it's implied that VC with respect to the track and VL with respect to the track. Oftentimes we don't write that. So here's, this is how I came up with the equation right here. The velocity of the left is equal to the velocity of the center and the right minus three. So once I know that, now I can make a substitution. I'm gonna go ahead and substitute in here for VL, VC plus R minus three. Now there's only one variable in my equation and I can solve for the velocity of the center in the right block. Is moving at 0.6 meters per second with respect to the track. Okay, now in the second separation, the same thing is true that the momentum doesn't change because it's only an internal force that's acting. So I can say the momentum of this center and the right piece together before they separate is the same as the sum of the momentum and the center piece and the right piece after they separate. The difference is now uh, before the momentum at the beginning was zero. Now the momentum is not zero. Okay, so the mass of C and R together times the velocity of C and R, which I found in my answer to part A. Okay, so that's 0.6. And now that's equal to the mass of center piece times its velocity with respect to the track, plus the mass of the right piece times its velocity with respect to the track. And I show here that the velocity of the right piece is the velocity of the center piece with respect to the track plus three. And again, if this doesn't make sense, if, if you have a hard time coming up with this, we can use the little trick that I showed you. Uh, VRT plus VTC is equal to VRC, right? Here's my outside terms equals RC right there. And my inside terms are the same, okay? And I know it was told to me in the problem that the velocity of the right with respect to the center is three meters per second to the right. So it's positive. So again, I R, the velocity of R with respect to the track is what I want. This is not quite what I want. So I switch it to CT, the velocity of C with respect to the track, which is what I want. And now when I switch the subscripts, I change the sign. And so from this, I can move the uh, VCT to the other side and I come up with my equation VC plus three equals VR. So that's what I've got there. VR equals VC plus three. So I can make that substitution in here. Now my equation has only one variable and I can solve for VC. I see that the center block after the second separation is now moving backwards or it's moving to the left on the track. Because remember this means the velocity of C with respect to the track negative 0.15 meters per second. Okay, so where is it at the end of this whole deal? And how fast is it moving, block C? How, where is it and how fast is it moving? Well, we have to break it down into two sections because it's moving at different speeds during those two time frames. So in the beginning, after the first separation, it was moving at 0.6 meters per second and it happened for a time of 0.8 seconds. So distance is equal to velocity times time for a constant velocity. So there we go, it moves 0.48 meters. Then in the second interval from 0.8 to 2.8, that's a time of two seconds, and it's moving, we found, at negative 0.15. So it goes 0.3 meters to the left. So at the end of the whole time frame, it's going to be at 0.18 meters, right? It went out to 0.48 meters, then it came back 0.3 meters from there. So now it's at 0.18 meters. And of course, it is moving at 
negative 0.15 meters per second at that time. So there are my answers. It's located at 0.18 meters and it's moving at negative 0.15 meters per second.